Have you ever run your fingernail along your teeth and felt a small notch, a little wedge-shaped groove, right where the tooth meets the gum line? Maybe you haven't felt it, but you definitely notice it when a sharp sensitivity hits after a sip of cold water or a bite of something sweet. For a long time, there's been one common suspect for this problem. But in this video, we're going to uncover what really causes this, how to fix it properly, and I'll tell you right now. It has almost nothing to do with how you brush your teeth. The common belief, and maybe something you've even been told, is that this type of wear comes from years of aggressive back and forth scrubbing with your toothbrush. It seems logical, but when we look closer, that theory falls apart pretty quickly. These specific wedge-shaped lesions are technically called abfractions. And here are three simple reasons why your toothbrush isn't the culprit. First, think about consistency. If aggressive brushing were the cause, wouldn't you see this damage on nearly all your teeth? After all, you brush all of them. Yet abfractions typically appear on just one or two specific teeth, often the canines or the premolars right behind them. The damage is localized, but your brushing is not. Second, consider the surrounding tissue. To brush hard enough to physically carve a groove into your tooth enamel, the hardest substance in your entire body, you would cause severe and constant trauma to your gums. We would expect to see red, puffy, painfully inflamed, and bleeding gums all the time. But often, these abfractions are seen on teeth with perfectly healthy looking gum tissue around them. The evidence just doesn't line up. And third is the simple logic of tool versus material. Imagine trying to carve a rock with a plastic fork. It just wouldn't happen. The soft plastic bristles of your toothbrush would become completely shredded, frayed, and destroyed long before they could wear a significant groove into healthy, solid enamel. The tool is simply too weak for the job. So we've established that brushing isn't what's carving these notches into your teeth. But this brings up a bigger, more alarming question. If our daily brushing routine isn't as powerful as we thought, what other hidden dental threats might it be failing to stop? In fact, recent groundbreaking research has identified a hidden bacterial film that covers our teeth and gums a film that traditional brushing, flossing, and mouthwash simply can't remove. This stubborn biofilm is now understood to be the true root cause of many common problems, from cavities and bad breath to bleeding gums. Before we continue with the specific physics behind abfractions, if you're concerned about this hidden threat that your toothbrush can't fight, there is a short video explaining a bizarre but scientifically proven five-second oral flush that dissolves this dangerous film and helps rebuild your teeth and gums from the inside out. Point your phone's camera at the QR code on the screen right now to watch it. I've also put a direct link in the pinned comment below. All right, for those of you still with me, let's get back to the specific cause of these tooth fractures or ab fractions. It has nothing to do with hygiene and everything to do with physics. So, if it isn't your toothbrush, what is it? The answer has nothing to do with hygiene and everything to do with physics. Abfraction is a stress fracture. It's caused by excessive and misplaced biting forces being applied to the tooth over and over again. To understand this, let's look at a tooth's design. If you see a tooth in cross section, you'll notice that the protective layer of enamel is very thick and robust on the top, the chewing surface. This makes sense. It's designed to crush and grind food. But as that enamel layer extends down the side of the tooth toward the root, it gets progressively thinner. Right at the gum line, the enamel is at its thinnest and most brittle point. Think of it like a tree trunk. It's thick and strong at the base, but the thinnest branches are always the first to snap under pressure. The neck of the tooth is that thin, fragile branch. Now, what happens when you bite? In a perfectly balanced bite, the forces are directed straight down the long axis of the tooth, which is how it's designed to handle pressure. But if you clench, grind your teeth at night, or if your bite is misaligned, your teeth receive heavy, off-center forces. This sideways pressure causes the entire tooth to flex, to bend an almost imperceptible microscopic amount. And all of that bending stress gets concentrated at the tooth's weakest point. 
that thin, brittle collar of enamel right at the gum line. Imagine bending a plastic ruler back and forth. You can do it a few times, but if you do it thousands upon thousands of times, micro cracks will eventually form and it will snap. The same thing happens to your tooth. Each time it flexes, tiny micro fractures form in the brittle enamel at the neck. Over months and years, these tiny fractures cause pieces of enamel to chip away, creating the characteristic wedge-shaped groove we call an abfraction. So, where do these destructive flexing forces come from? There are generally three main triggers. The first, and most common, is bruxism. This is the medical term for the habitual, often unconscious, clenching or grinding of your teeth. Many people do this in their sleep generating immense forces for hours at a time, night after night. This sustained heavy force is a primary cause of tooth flexure. The second trigger is occlusal trauma, which is a fancier way of saying a bad bite. This can happen if one tooth hits its opposing tooth before all the others. Maybe a new filling or crown was left a little too high, or maybe your teeth are just naturally misaligned. This single premature contact point forces all your jaw muscle power onto one or two teeth, causing them to flex under the load. And the third trigger is orthodontic movement. When you have braces or clear aligners, your teeth are constantly being shifted. During this process, they can move through temporary positions where they create premature contacts, leading to the same kind of focused stress that causes abfractions. Sometimes these lesions can even appear during the course of orthodontic treatment. So, knowing the real cause, how do we properly treat abfractions? The approach depends on the severity and your symptoms. If the notch is very shallow and your only complaint is mild occasional sensitivity, the first step is often the most conservative. Using a desensitizing toothpaste at home or having a professional strength desensitizing varnish applied at a dental office can be enough to block the sensitivity and monitor the area. However, if the notch is deeper, if it's trapping food, or if the sensitivity is significant and persistent, then the area needs to be sealed with a filling. But not all fillings are created equal for this task. Because the tooth is still flexing, a standard rigid filling material can be too brittle and may simply pop off under pressure. For abfractions, dentists often use special filling materials like flowable composites or glass ionomers, which have a slight degree of flex to them, allowing them to bend with the tooth instead of breaking away from it. The technique is also critical. To ensure the filling lasts, the area must be kept perfectly dry. And a special thread called a retraction cord is often gently tucked into the gum pocket. This pushes the gum away just enough to ensure the filling can seal the entire depth of the notch, leaving no gap at the edge. A poorly sealed filling will fail quickly and can allow bacteria to seep underneath, causing a new cavity. In very severe cases, where the notch is so deep that it threatens the structural integrity of the tooth, a full coverage dental crown may be needed to hold everything together and protect it. But here is the most important part of this entire video. Simply placing a filling, no matter how well it's done, without addressing the original cause of the flexing, is like patching a pothole in the middle of an earthquake. It is destined to fail. The underlying forces that created the problem in the first place will still be there, working to break the bond of your new filling. This is why treating the cause is the only true solution. If the cause is bruxism, the definitive treatment is a custom-made hard night guard. I emphasize the word hard because soft rubbery guards you can buy at the store can actually act like a chew toy, encouraging your muscles to clench even more. A hard, properly adjusted guard distributes the forces evenly and protects your teeth. If the cause is a bad bite, the solution is to fix the bite. This might involve a simple procedure called a bite adjustment, where a dentist carefully reshapes tiny interfering contact points on the teeth, or it might require orthodontics to move the teeth into a more stable and harmonious position. So that notch at your gum line isn't a sign of poor brushing habits. It's a sign that your bite needs attention. If you have these lesions, talk to your dentist. Don't just ask for a filling, ask them to investigate your bite to find the root cause, because understanding the why is the first and most crucial step to 
to finding a true, long-lasting solution.